we're going to have a look at fractional and negative indices when they're put together. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes, and we'll see what we make of these ones. So this first one, we've got 25 to the power of negative a half. Now when it comes to these powers, we just need to remember what each piece does. So if we make some notes on this, the negative part of the power, as we've seen before, does the reciprocal. It flips it over, so it flips it over. The number on the bottom, underneath, underneath that line there, which I like to refer to as ground level, the number underneath does the root. So in the case of a two, that would be a square root, and if it was a three, it'd be a cube root, and so on. And the number on the top is just a normal power. So these are the three things that we have to look at when we have these combinations going on. And sometimes we might not have a number on the bottom, sometimes we might not have a negative, but if we have them all, we have to think about all three of these pieces. So it doesn't matter what order you do it in. Now, I tend to always go for this number on the bottom first, purely because it's easier to do the root of a number than it is to then do the, uh, to, than it is to do the normal power when the number's quite large. If we imagine there was a normal power of two on the top, it'd be a lot easier for us to square root this than it would be to do, say, 25 squared first. So I always do the number on the bottom first, that's just personal preference, although you can do it in any order that you like. So what I've got to do here, first of all, I'm going to deal with this number on the bottom. So I'm going to go for this root first. So if I do the square root of 25, we get the answer 5. So that's the root dealt with. Now I'm going to move on to the other piece. So I've got the flip going on, or the reciprocal. So if I flip 5 over, remembering 5 is 5 over 1, if we flip that over, it becomes 1 over 5. Now the normal power there is just a 1, and a normal power of 1 Let's find a different colour, I've used quite a lot now. A normal power of one doesn't actually change anything. Anything to the power of one is just itself. So that one over five there would be my final answer. Let's have a look at another one though where that normal power on the top is something different to one. Okay, so here we go. Write down the value of 64 to the power of negative two thirds. So 64 to the power of negative two thirds. So as you can see, we've got a 2 on the top now. So that 2 on the top as a normal power is going to square whatever number we're looking at, okay, as a normal power. The 3 on the bottom is going to do a root, and specifically that's going to be a cube root because it's a 3. And the negative symbol again is just going to flip this number over, do the reciprocal. So we'll do whatever order we like. I'm going to do the cube root first. As I said before, I always do the root to start with. So I'm going to do with this bit to start with. So if we do the cube root of 64, the cube root of 64 is 4. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. So that is my cube root dealt with. Now let's have a look at the next part. Rather than flipping it over, let's square it. Let's do this one to start with. So 4 squared, 4 times 4 is 16. So 16. And the final part here, let's do the flip, the reciprocal. So 16 is 16 over 1. Let's flip that over, 1 over 16. And there's our final answer. So we had three steps there. I first did the cube root, then I squared it, and then I flipped it over. You, again, you can rearrange the order that you do it in. But personally, I'd rather not do 64 squared and try and work out the cube root of it. I'd rather work out the cube root of it while it's a smaller number. So let's have a look at one more. OK, so write down the value of 9 to the power of 3 over 2, or 3 halves. So 9 to the power of 3 over 2. Now you might notice straight away we've not got a negative symbol. Well, that's fine. That just means we're not going to do any flipping it over. We're not going to write the reciprocal. But I'm still going to deal with these just like I did before. I'm just not going to have to flip it over. So on the bottom, we've got the root. And that is a 2, so it's a square root. And on the top, we've got the normal power. And that's going to cube it to the power of 3. So 9, the square root of 9 to start with, if I deal with this root to start with, the square root of 9 is 3. And then moving on to the normal power there, the cube, I'll do 3 cubed, which I can write separately down here, 3 cubed. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 again is 27. So my final answer there is 27. Remembering I don't have to flip it over because there's no negative in this particular power. Right, here's some for you to have a go at. Okay, so there's four questions. Just pay attention to what pieces are in the power. Remembering the negative will flip it over, the number underneath will do the root, and the number on the top is the normal power. So have a go, pause the video, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so 36 to the power of negative a half. So there is a negative, so it's going to flip, and there's a 2 on the bottom. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the square root of 36, which is 6, and then I'll flip it over 
So one over six is our final answer there. On to the one below, 27 to the negative two thirds. So it's gonna flip. It's gonna do a cube root on the bottom and a two, so it's gonna square as well. So I'm gonna do the cube root first. Cube root of 27 is three. Then I'm gonna square that. So we'll square that, which is nine. And then we can do the negative part. We can flip it over, so one over nine. And there's that one. The next one, write down the value of 100 to the power of 3 over 2, so no negative, but we are we have got a 2 on the bottom, so we'll do the square root first, and the square root of 100 is 10. And then we've got a 3 on the top, so we need to cube that. 10 cubed is 10 times 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100, and then times it by 10 again is 1,000, so 10 cubed is 1,000. So my final answer there is 1,000. And then on to the last one. Write down the value of 16 to the power of 3 quarters. Now we've got a 4 on the bottom there, which we didn't look at on one of the other ones. So a 4 on the bottom will be a 4th root. So I need to do the 4th root of 16. So I need to know what number times itself 4 times makes 16. Now when it comes to 4th root, these numbers are never going to get very large because by the time we get to the 5 to the power of 4, we're at 625, we get quite large. So we're only looking really at 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So let's have a think. 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So the fourth root of 16 is 2. There you go. You can always just test that out down the bottom just to make sure you're happy with it. So the fourth root of 16 is 2. There's a 3 on the top, so we need to do 2 cubed. And 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And that's our final answer there. Okay, so they're the answers. Let's have a look at some slightly different ones. Okay, so write down the value of nine over 25 is a fraction all to the power of negative a half. So we've got a fraction here now to the power of negative a half. We're gonna treat it in exactly the same way. So we've got nine over 25, and that's all to the power of negative a half. So again, just applying those same rules, we've got a negative in the power, so we're gonna flip it, We've got a two down the bottom, which is gonna do the root. And we've got a normal power on the top there, so I'm not gonna to have to do anything for that one on the top, so I'm just gonna label those two. So let's decide what we're gonna do first. Let's do the root first, as that's what I, I keep doing. I keep doing this root first. So we're gonna do the square root of nine on the top, and the square root of 25 on the bottom. And the square root of nine is three, and the square root of 25 is five, so we get three fifths. But then we've got one more step, we've got this flip still, so we still need to flip it over. So when we flip it over, we get five over three, and that's fine there as a final answer. Just remembering though, we could write our answer in a different way here, because that is an improper fraction there, we've got top heavy. So we can think how many threes go into five, and that's one, with a remainder of two, so a remainder of two thirds left over. So I could also write my answer as one and two thirds if I want to write it as a mixed number, but both answers there are fine. Let's have a look at another one. Okay, here we go. So write down the value of eight over 27 to the power of two thirds. So we've got eight over 27, and our power there is two thirds. So again, no negative in this one, so we're not gonna have to flip it, but we do need to deal with these two numbers. So on the bottom, I have a three, which is a root, and that is a three there, so that's a cube root. And on the top, we have our normal power of two, which is gonna be to square the numbers. Right, so again, just like before, you can do this in whatever order you like. I'm gonna stick with the root to start with. So I need to do the cube root of both these numbers. And it's a bit of a hint in the numbers in that they're both cube numbers. So the better you know your square and your cube numbers, the easier this becomes. So the cube root of eight is two, and the cube root of 27 is three. So we're at two thirds at this point. Now the next thing I'm gonna to have to deal with is this square. So I need to square both of them. So two squared and three squared, and two squared is four and three squared is nine. So my final answer there is four over nine. And I can leave my answer just like that, it doesn't simplify. So that is absolutely fine as a final answer. Okay, so some for you to have a go at. Okay, here's four questions. Have a go, just remember, negative flips it, number on the bottom does the root, and the top number is a normal power. Okay, so pause the video there, and we'll go over the answers. Okay, so the first one. Now we're gonna to have to flip that over and the two on the bottom does the root. So if I do the root to start with, and I always do write down my working out here to show what I'm doing. The square root of 64 is eight. The square root of 81 is nine. And then we have to do the negative power. So flipping it over, nine over eight. And again, we can leave our answer like that, or we could convert it into a mixed number. Eight goes into nine once with a remainder of one. So one and one eighth. There you go, one and one eighth. So the next one below. 
write down the value of 8 over 125 to the power of negative 2 thirds, so 3 on the bottom, so we're going to cube root both of these, so the cube root of 8 and the cube root of 125. So the cube root of 8 is 2 and the cube root of 125 is 5. Now we need to deal with that power on the top, so what have we got? We've got a power of 2, so these are both going to get squared. So 2 squared is 4 and 5 squared is 25. We're almost finished, we just need to finish this off now by flipping it over because we've got that negative power again. So flip that over and we get 25 over 4, which again we could write as a mixed number. 4 goes into 25 up to 24, so it goes in 6 times with a remainder of 1, so 1 quarter left over, so we could say 6 and a quarter as well. Onto this top right, so 25 over 100 to the power of 3 over 2. So no negative, so we're not going to flip it. There's a 2 on the bottom, so first things first, we'll do the square root of both these numbers. Square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 100 is 10. A 5 over 10 is actually a half, so we could actually simplify this now, but let's have a look. Let's just follow the process. So 3 on the top, so we're going to cube both of these. So cube of 5, cube of 10. The cube of 5 is 125, and the cube of 10 is 1,000. So again, I think this actually might have been easier for us to actually simplify that 5 over 10 to start with, and then to cube the numbers from there, because from here we really should simplify this. This is our final answer, but we can actually simplify this. So the top and bottom both divide by, they both divide by 125 actually, but that's not very nice. Let's divide them by 25 to start with. So divide the top by 25 gives us 5, and divide the bottom by 25. 25 goes into 100 four times, so that's 5 over 40. And again, that simplifies again, so by, divide the top and bottom by 5, we get 1 over 8. Okay, so our final answer there is 1 over 8. Although we could leave our answer as 125 over 1000, it is always best for us to look to simplify there. I actually think, and if we pull this to the side, if we'd have simplified here, we would have got 1 over 2, and then we would have cubed the top cube the bottom and we just straight away just got 1 over 8 and not had to worry about simplifying later on. And to the last one, 64 over 1000 to the power of 2 thirds, 3 on the bottom, so we're going to do the cube root of both these numbers, so the cube root of 64 on the top, the cube root of 1000 on the bottom, and we can work those ones out, so the cube root of 64 is 4, the cube root of, sorry that should be 1000 on the bottom, the cube root of 1000 is 10. And again, actually, we could simplify this before squaring it. So have a look at it in both ways. So if I simplify it first, they both divide by 2, so that's 2 fifths. So from here, if we do the one on the top, we need to square them both, so we get 16 over 100. And if we square it after we'd simplified it, we'd have got 4, that's not a 4, 4 over 25. And that there doesn't simplify, but 16 over 100 does. They both divide by 4. So if we divide the top by 4, we get 4. And the bottom by 4, we get 25. So our final answer there is 4 over 25. But we could have got 16 over 100. It doesn't actually ask us to simplify it, but I always look to simplify where possible. Right, so that's those finished. That's the end of this one. So if you like that video, if it was helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.